brown church, oh, that little brown church in the bed. Good morning. Welcome to Shiloh. It's good to come to the house of the Lord. As we get ready to welcome the change of the season from summer to fall. We're thankful for the rains that the good Lord has brought us, for the green grass that we have this time of year. Lord, just let us be in your presence as we get ready to celebrate homecoming and you to be with us. Thank you that we can come to this little house. We pray for the good Sundays. We sing these good songs, read from your good book, and we pray for a message this morning. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray for Miss Tommy, Miss Connie, Miss Liz, the deaconesses of our church, the saints of this church. We pray for them. We pray for healing upon Bill Taylor's stepdaughter, Brooke, as she's going through recovery from surgery at UT Southwestern. We pray for Tristan and Dancy and the White family, especially for the White family. They've been sick with COVID and other things. Help them now. Pray for those who have been ill with upper respiratory viruses, and all the things that are difficult to deal with. Lord, there's difficult times about, but you have shown us the way that we should trust in you, and we should be with you always. See us through the valley of the shadow, with the words of life of your Son lift us up. Let us look to you, our Father and Daddy in heaven. You will show us the way. We give you the thanks and the praise all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
For our scripture reading today, we're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 10, 17 through 22. Matthew 10, 17 through 22. Listen now to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, they will scourge you in the synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, and for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, take no thought for what you shall speak or what shall be given. The same hour which you speak. For it is not you that speaks, but the Spirit of the Father which speaks in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, the father to child, and children shall raise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer now. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for these words, these words of belief, words of perseverance, the words of de- declaration, declaring that we love Jesus Christ, that we will declare Jesus Christ no matter what, that no matter what the cost, we will say that we know Jesus and we love him and that you will speak through us so that we can show Jesus and your love to all, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Let us declare that Jesus is our Savior in all ways and all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we begin our sermon today, 
Let us turn once more in our Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, and from the 17th unto the 22nd verse. I say again, Matthew chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. Listen now unto the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. It cannot be denied that we live in a world and in an era of persecution, an age of darkness and sin in which the church is under attack in each and every moment, on a personal, societal, and global level, a world where all around us, our own kin, our own family, our husbands and our wives, our sons and our daughters, our brothers and our sisters fall to chaos and to sin and rail against us from all around crying out for us to be destroyed, to be put to death, to be mocked and scourged in all of their councils and their public places. But through it all, even in the midst of this tribulation, our God promises and our God vows that if we will only endure to the end, we shall be saved. That in the end, we will have our deliverance, that we will have that everlasting life that he promises to us in each and every single page of his gospel, of that blessed good news. And how does he save? He saves by his outstretched hand, as in the days of Moses, when, when Pharaoh and Egypt were stricken by the plagues for refusing to heed the God of Israel, as in the days of Isaiah and Hezekiah, when the blasphemy of Assyria's emissaries was met by God sending destruction upon their army, as in the days of Daniel, of Ezra, and Nehemiah, when God sent the Persians to destroy Babylon, that nation which had held the Jews, the people of Israel, God's own chosen tribe here on this earth, in captivity for seventy long years. And even as he sent the Persians upon Babylon, so too does our God save, does he save his people by the hands of his champions, by those brave men and women who stood up, who heard the voice of God, that still, small voice in their minds, crying out for them to save his people. 
to be the instruments of God in their time. As in the days of Joshua, when Israel at last found rest after 40 years of wandering through the desert, when they at last, by the power of God, gained the land that they had been promised. As in the days of Gideon and Deborah, of Samuel and Samson, when all of Israel's foreign oppressors were driven out time and time again by the power of our God, sometimes, as, it, as in the days of Gideon, with fear and fear alone, fear of our God, of his power, of how he shall save, as in the days of Saul and of David, of Josiah and Uriah, of all the righteous leaders and champions which God raised up among his people, which shattered their adversaries and did their utmost to root out the corruption that spawned within the ranks of Israel, clearing the way and preparing the way for the coming of God's own Son, the Son by whose hand and by whose blood each and every one of us is saved as well. That Son, that very incarnation of God here on this earth, who offered himself as a sacrifice for our sin, who gave his life for our sake, that we may be reconciled to the Father, who, for the love of all humanity, endured the cross, endured the torment, endured the shame, knowing that in the end his Father would save him. And even so, shall our Father save us all. For even if we fall to persecution and tribulation here on this earth, even if our bodies are destroyed, we will not fear those who can only kill the body. For no matter what, if we will endure to the end, if we will hold tight to our God, to his commandments, to his love, and to love of him, we shall be saved, we shall be set free, and we shall rise anew as new beings, as new creations, free from all our sin, free at last from the persecution and tribulation of this age, even as Christ rose anew to at last look upon that golden city, that new Jerusalem, that age in which the kingdom of God will be made manifest here on this earth, that time in which God will reign among his people, and there will be no more tears, no more suffering, no more pain for all those who will love our God, for all those who will endure unto the end and shall be saved. The new Jerusalem awaits for those who will hold on to our God. The kingdom of heaven, the very presence of our God in spirit and in truth. Such awaits those who love and those who endure in the name of our God. And so seeing what awaits those who will endure, I say unto you, be strong and of good courage. Hold on to the will and the love of God. Or if this is the first time you hear these words, accept him, accept 
his love. And this too can be yours. And this, this precious reward, this gift of life everlasting can be yours as well. If you will only come to him, cling to him, if you will only endure to the end, you shall be saved. Amen. And let us go forth this day, enduring to the end, trusting in our God, that he will save us all. In his name, go forth. Amen. <laughs>